Tiger. Rawr. Where's Kelly? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hello all and welcome to another video. If we haven't met yet, my name is Madison Don't and here on this channel, I literally teach you the science to becoming holistically healthy and happy. So if you have been following my journey, at least for the last couple of weeks, either on my YouTube channel or over on my Instagram, which is where I kind of post more of the behind the scenes stuff, you would know that I am currently in a season of leveling up, I guess. So I've had a couple of things, a couple of big main things on my vision board all year. And now I'm at the stage where it's time to take action because manifesting you can't just put something on a vision board and then automatically it comes true you have to actually then take aligned action to make it happen so i do plan on doing a few more videos on how i actually made these things come into fruition on my youtube channel coming up um but for now as you would have seen from the title of this video and also my thumbnail i'm getting my puppy today and i <sighs> i am so excited to the point where i woke up this morning at 4 30 a.m and i knew that would happen i tried to go to bed early last night because i knew that i'd wake up early but yeah i had to just sort out a lot of last minute things so what breed is she she is a toy cavoodle and in america i think they call them cavapoos um so they're the same thing and she is a toy so she is Mm, gonna be so so small puppies are like the real cute stage and because she's a toy she's gonna be like that forever um but also because i am in apartment living it just kind of makes sense to have as small as dog possible because it's a bit unfair otherwise if they don't have a backyard um how much money was she she was a lot of money but she's worth it um so as you probably all know the pandemic in the world at the moment has caused prices of puppies to skyrocket. Um, so my sister has a beautiful standard Groodle. So she's a, a little bit bigger, a lot bigger actually. Um, and she is just like the most amazing dog. She's so beautiful, I swear she's human. Like she just, she's very socially intelligent and she just knows what's going on. And yeah, she's just awesome. So mine's gonna, I'm gonna train her up to be just like that. Um, and yeah, so she, my sister bought her for 3,500. So we're talking in Australian dollars. My sister bought her for 3,500 um, two years ago, um, obviously before a pandemic. And now the prices have absolutely skyrocketed. I did pay 5,500, um, but you know, I'm single. I am really looking forward to like, just having the company, having the cuddles. And it's just, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of have someone to be responsible for as well, I guess, like a dependent. Um, so yeah, that's very, very exciting. Another question that I'll probably get is how did I find her? So I have been on waiting lists since about April, 2020, and this video is coming out and I'm picking her up in December, 2020. So it has been a long journey. Um, and obviously because of the pandemic, all the waiting lists were absolutely packed. Like I was on one waiting list and every month or so they would send you an update on what place you are in the waiting list and when I first signed up to the waiting list I was 843 <laughs> like what um, and then when I got sent another email telling me my updated position in the waiting list when I already had um, secured a deposit on my current pup they said like oh here's your updated waiting list and I'd gone down to like 600 and something and I was like are you kidding me so my sister found this breeder on Gumtree because there are a lot of home breeders at the moment also trying to keep up with the demand and obviously it's like a smart idea if you want to breed your dog to do it now when prices are higher like you're just going to earn more money. So yeah she just um, my breeder listed her puppies when they were like two or three weeks old and they went in a couple of days. My sister found them the morning of the Thursday and I messaged the breeder and I was like I'm dead serious like when can I come and meet her I'll put down a deposit like let me come ASAP because I knew that she would be getting so many people messaging her and interested um, and then she was like okay come tomorrow which is Friday at 10 a.m. and I did and oh, I fell in love with her straight away she was only three weeks old so she did kind of look a bit like a rat so I'll put a photo here of what she looks like at three weeks um, but she was just so cute and then um, yeah put a deposit down which is like $500 um, and then I have to pay the rest of the money today Sorry if you can hear my washing machine. Um, I'm almost done and then I'll go and take you to see her. Um, and last time I visited her, it was when she was six weeks old 
and I just I could not believe how small she still was. Like I thought that she was gonna, I don't know, have grown a bit bigger. But then when I opened the door and the breeder had her in her hands to greet me at the door, I was like, oh my god, because she was like that big, like so tiny. Um, anyway, that is my friend. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in two seconds. Hello, I'll see you soon. So anyway, my friend is here. Um, it is a good idea when you're going to pick up a new puppy, if you are a single gal and you're not going in your little couple, um, to bring a friend or a family member, or my family's on the Sunshine Coast, otherwise they would have shotgunned coming. Um, so I'm just bringing a friend, one of my closest friends in Brisbane. Um, she's coming with me, so she is going to drive us home while I nurse my baby Callie, which is her name, stands for the soul that evokes sunshine and palm trees. So I really wanted something that was kind of like really bright vibes. So her name is Callie. So I'm gonna nurse her on the way home and Megan's gonna drive us home and then we're gonna play and train. So I will talk to you really soon. Can't wait to show you the process and for you to meet her. All right, everyone, meet Megan. She Hi. is my amazing driver for the day. <laughs> we just went and got some caffeine and um, the drive is going to take 31 minutes and we've got 35 minutes until pickup time. How perfect is that? All right, you'll see you soon. Yes! <laughs> she's always so much tinier than I think she's gonna be. <laughs> Hi, beautiful. She's five, 550 grams. Wow. 550 grams, you're kidding me. <laughs> She's more like a cat. <laughs> a cat. <laughs> Aww. She loves Annie Megan. <laughs> Aww. Darling. Everyone, I would like you to officially meet Callie. Oh, she's even looking at the camera when I did that. Oh, what was your first thoughts? She's just so beautiful and so placid. Megan got a little cuddle. Oh, look, she's always looking at the camera. You are <laughs> such a good girl. She's literally just going to be like beautiful. the most photogenic oh. dog ever. All right, let's see. The breeder didn't feed her, so hopefully she doesn't throw up in the car. I know that that's quite common with dogs, so if she does, then that's okay. We'll see how we go. Hopefully Megan's driving isn't too crazy. <laughs> We're just having cuddles with Auntie Megan while we wait for Kmart. Don't worry, she's not staying in the driver's seat while we drive. <laughs> we just have to pick up her play pen last minute because I decided to get an extra one. All right, so we got home about an hour ago. Hey, darling. Where's Elephant? She's she's in such a playful mood now that I've fed her and she's had some water. And she's gone to the toilet. And we've set up this little, so that's a little wee over there. I haven't cleaned it up because I want her to know that that's where the wee happens. So I'm just gonna leave the scent over there for the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And um, we've I've created this little pen. I didn't initially um, plan to set my apartment up like a big play pen, but um, yeah, this is what happens when you love something this much and it's this cute. Chase. <laughs> yeah, she's um, not really used to her collar yet, so she's occasionally she'll freak out about the collar. Darling, I need to distract you. Come on. people you could ever want no. over here. <laughs> There's nothing over there you want. Look how big your playpen is. Come love us. <laughs> oh. Is she going to pee again? Mm, oh, oh, she's going to poo. Yay, good girl. You know, we'd prefer it on the map, but hey. Good girl, Callie. Good girl. She gets really anxious before she's about to go to the toilet, hey? Um, let's not eat it, okay. <laughs> okay, so Megan just left um, 
wow, a while ago now. It's taken me that long to have lunch because even though, disclaimer, I have no idea what it's like having a human baby, that's the most that I can like in this too, is that you can't, like I've just had friends that have had babies and been pregnant and they always say like you can't get a single task done, you're always like interrupting the task. So something like making your lunch will actually end up taking you so much longer. Um, and that's kind of what I'm experiencing at the moment. So she sleeps for little bits at a time. Um, she's so beautiful. Anyway, so um, we got home at about 10.30. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, 10.30. Um, and then Megan hung around until maybe 12, 12.30. Um, and now it's 1.30. So it's taken me about an hour, maybe a little bit longer to have lunch. Um, and that's just because I went over there and I was like making it. And then she woke up halfway through and really wanted to play. She was like walking around, like trying to play with her toys by herself, but like no one was stimulating her. So then I had to jump in here um, and play with her. And also like as soon as they wake up, they're... Like if they say that when they you take them to the toilet as soon as they wake up um, and also after they've had food and drink um, but what I find really interesting is that she's been so so good but the only time that she's gotten really anxious and I'm talking about like anxiety attack anxious and like doesn't want me to touch her and she like runs to the outside of this little pen that I've made um, is when she needs to go to the toilet so I don't know what it was like when she went to the toilet back home at like the breeder's house obviously she had lots of different pups around her um, I'm assuming usually what the mother does is she um, will like lick the pups to make them go to the toilet and then lick them to clean them up so maybe she's not used to going to the toilet by herself and her mum's always just like done it for her but um yeah she gets really freaked out almost like she expects to get in trouble for it um so yeah that's really sad it like breaks my heart but at the same time because i've picked up on that cue she's only gone to the toilet like three times but i've each of those times she full-on had like an anxiety fit um so because i know her cue now um i know when she needs to go to the toilet she hasn't mastered the potty pads thing yet um but because i know the cue now i can like when she's getting like that i can pick her up and put her on the potty pads um but i just make sure to really praise her and really make it a happy thing and i'm like yes good girl like you went to the toilet so that she doesn't feel like like even if she misses the potty pads and she has like I don't know, she goes somewhere else on the tiles. Like, I'm still, like, stoked about it. And I'm like, you did it! Um, because I want to kind of remove that anxiety around it. So that's kind of what we've been working on. Um, she really loves the crate. Like, she goes in there voluntarily, although she has been sleeping here. Um, I don't know if it's just kind of, like, something to do with the balcony because it's, like, fresh air. Um, although the crate is, like, literally right there. Um, but I think I am going to rearrange this a little bit. I know that you probably shouldn't change things up too much when like you know the puppy's just getting used to everything but before she gets too used to this setup i would just want to move the crate or even just the bed there like against that little cupboard because i get the afternoon sun so if for some reason i need to leave her in the house um obviously she'll be in the pen and everything it'll be all safe but if for some reason i need to leave her home um i need to leave her in a place that won't get like hectic afternoon sun otherwise she'll just be way too hot so that's my plan so I probably should move things around while she's sleeping she's such a little darling honestly she's so beautiful um, and then with food um, because she usually eats three times a day so morning lunch and night or oh, that's what the breeder said so yeah she was very hungry very hungry when we got home she was even like trying to nibble on my fingers and stuff um, in the car so we did a bit of training when she got home and I was feeding her like in and around the crate so that she associated it with like good times and it wasn't like a scary place. I've also left the crate door open. There's one on this side that you can't really see. I've been leaving the crate door open at all times just while she's in this little playpen so that she can go in and around her crate as she pleases and explores it. Um, so yeah, basically I have her water bowl here with water all the time. But in terms of food, while they're so young, it's really awesome to use every feeding time as an opportunity for training. Um, so yeah, I'll, when I fed her her breakfast, which was a late breakfast, um, we did like the crate training. The, the biscuits that I feed her are really small, so they're just like that small. Um, so they've been really good for training. What are you doing, 
I honestly feel like I'm on a play date. Like I feel like I'm gonna have to give her back. I don't feel like she's mine forever. She probably shouldn't be sleeping on her potty pads, but I don't know. I'm just trying to be a little bit more lenient. We've also been working on separation anxiety. So when I was up making my lunch and she was down here, um, if I walk into another room or even if I'm literally right there but she's in the pen and she like can't get to me She like will start crying like worried that I'm gonna annoy my neighbors. I just have to I don't know Yeah, go with the training. I guess like she's gonna cry. I can't stop that So we've just been working on a command called quiet um, and so whenever she um, settles herself um, I will give her a treat and say quiet. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of what I'm working on at the moment. I have been watching um, two YouTubers in particular. One is Zach George and the other one is Rachel Someone. But they are both really, 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 really good. I would highly recommend that you watch them. Um, I'm definitely going to have to watch a few more videos tonight. Um, and that's the thing. You don't know. Some puppies are going to be better at some skills than others. And it's just like you never know what your puppy's going to need. So fortunately for me, crate training has been so easy so far so i guess i can't talk too soon like we'll see what tonight is like but i do have to work on potty training because she seems to have a lot of anxiety around that at the moment and i also have to work on biting so she doesn't like bite aggressively or hard or anything like that but her play whenever she yeah when she's playing she wants to bite as play um and i just don't want her to get into the habit of that um i don't want my dog to be a biter by default um, so yeah, that's kind of what I want to work on. So this afternoon, once I exhaust her, her next nap, I probably will just move this onto the couch and I'll lie there with her and um, we'll watch some Netflix and learn how to try and prevent biting because dogs are learning literally all the time. So it is good to kind of obviously not take them anywhere where they're going to interact with other dogs or the scents or the waste of other dogs because she's only had one vaccination and she has to have three. Um, but it is good just to expose her to different things. She's had a lot of sound des desensitization today. Um, and she also came from a family with kids. So there would be a little bit of desensitization there. Um, but yeah, just, just little things. But we'll see how she goes with the blender and the juicer tomorrow morning. But <sighs> I feel like I shouldn't wake her. I also have to FaceTime um, my family because they want to see her. So I feel like I just need to relax and watch some YouTube before I call people because I'm exhausted <laughs> oh, I hope I get some sleep tonight we will see and also we're gonna go to puppy preschool but because of the Christmas period um, puppy preschool isn't next opened until the second week of January but she'll be 12 weeks by then so I really need to start her training now um, even though she can't socialize with other dogs I do intend to maybe just walk her to the coffee shop tomorrow and everyone will be like oh she's so cute and like give her little pats and stuff so that she gets more socialized to human connection um, and just a range of different environments without putting her down. Don't worry, I'm not gonna put her in any type of danger. Um, and if I was, then I would just keep her home. Like, it's not for me, it's not a problem. I'm just trying to educate her, keep the training going, and just support her as best I can with lots of positive reinforcement. And if she bites me, um, I'm just kind of like redirecting her um, or like giving her a toy or something like that. Um, or I have also heard a tip, um, Rachel said to like, yelp kind of like a puppy like ow and then you just like turn away and stop playing and they're like oh she stopped playing with me so that's also working but i feel like it's gonna take a while to to do that so anyway i'm gonna stop talking um and we might when she wakes up have a little play oh, is that Callie? oh look at your stretching <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, you are the cutest. Go! Go get it! Go get it! When she pounces on her toys, it is the cutest thing ever. Um, that was literally the chillest she's ever been when going to the toilet. And she went like mostly on the puppy pads. I am so proud of you! We are killing training! Yes! World's best trainer ever! <laughs> we haven't officially said hello yet. <gasps> oh, isn't she the cutest thing ever? 
She's literally the size of my head. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go for a little grass time. And then we can snuggle and watch YouTube. All right, good deal. <laughs> I love that I have like doggy biscuits everywhere. What are you doing, Missy? We tried to build a fortress with the pillows, but you just want to get out. What are you doing? Yeah, you gotta stay in here. Little cuddle zone. Oh! I love this elephant toy. So entertaining with the nose. Uh uh uh, we don't wanna be biting my pants, please. Oh, yes! Please don't tug a war on my pants. <laughs> You're a little tiger. Rawr. Seriously. Please don't bite the pants. <laughs> How are you so cute? Distraction. <laughs> How are we going to do this? No biting the pants and no biting. Me thing. How are we going to do it, cutie? You're so tiny. That's my hand. She's in the palm of, look at your palm, and that's how big her head is. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> How's your first day been? You just woke up from a big nap? And then you went to the toilet on your potty pads like a good girl. Mummy's just having some dinner. Then we're gonna play. And then it'll be bedtime. You just woke up from a nap, didn't you? You think it's all the attention, don't you? You're a quick learner. I tell you what, I think you're pretty cute. So a little update, she slept really well last night. Um, the little pen that I had for her beside my bed made it so easy because one room was her bed and then the other room was like a pee pad and she had no other like area to go to the toilet. So she took herself to the toilet one time. She did cry and I woke up maybe three times, four times throughout the night, but because I was right there, I just like rolled over and gave her little pats and then she went back to sleep. But she probably cries more during the day than she does at night. Like if she's, if I'm not literally holding her, she's crying. So even if I'm like standing up, like making my lunch or like doing my makeup or something, she, and she's at my feet, she'll still like be crying. But this is, this is the current situation. We're just about to go to a coffee shop so that I can get some caffeine because I'm exhausted. She exhausts me more in the daytime than in the nighttime. So it is day three. Did I startle you, baby? It is day, oh, okay. It is day three of having her and finally I am back in routine. I can get work done. She just sits there and watches me and we've just found our groove with each other, which is just so good because I was going crazy there for a little while. I was like, is this it? Am I just a dog mom now? And I can't do anything else with my life. I was just overreacting. It was just the first two days.
Okay, so it is now five days later, so it is Friday. She is still alive and well, but it has been a week. Obviously, the first day I was like so positive about everything, but oh, they test you. You've tested me. But I think the worst thing, she's, did you just try and bite my shoulder? I love her, but you know. There is a lot of training that has to go into puppies and I, I don't know, I thought we were killing it the first day, but it has been a very exhausting week. Um, I just went to yoga for the first time. Today is actually the first time that I've really been outside the house without her all week. I did go for lunch quickly one of the days um, and yeah, she was crying when I left and crying when I got back. So who knows if she actually slept in that hour. But the whole point that I'm like going out now is like really to help the separation anxiety. It got pretty bad. Um, as you maybe can see, let me just show you. So we don't have like a pen set up anymore. I've just kind of barricaded off some of the areas of the house. So she has access to the living room um, and she has access to the lounge room. So I have a little camera set up just behind my TV um, and that watches her, which has been so helpful. Cause yeah, like I said, I just went to yoga um, and I could see that when I first went to yoga, she was all like calm. And then when I got to yoga, I checked on her again and she was going absolutely crazy, but she wasn't wrecking anything. She was just going in her mood. Like her telltale sign when she has to go to the toilet is she gets really naughty. And also she has this cute little like three-legged limp thing. Originally I thought there was something wrong with her leg, but um, anyway, I didn't intend to talk for that long towards the end of the video because I know this video has already gone for so long. So if you have enjoyed it so far, then please make sure to like it below and send me a little comment, um, just showing your love, letting me know what you thought about this vlog or any questions that you have. Um, the nighttime training, bed training and crate training is going really, really well. She slept all throughout the night last night. She takes herself to the toilet she kind of knows how to sit now um, because we've been doing that training during her meal times. Um, separation anxiety has been so much better since I ditched the pen and we've just kind of got um, a bigger area now. Um, so I can go to the bathroom, I can do my makeup, I can go to yoga and she doesn't cry for me at all. Potty training's going really well. She knows to go on the pads. Um, she's only had a few accidents. Sometimes she'll like go right beside the pads. Now she's biting my finger. We've talked about this. And she has really sharp um, like eye teeth, the like little ones on the side. You're cute, but I just don't like when you bite me. Everything is going really well today, um, but I did have a little bit of a breakdown last night. She just would not stop squealing. Like I couldn't even go to the toilet, she would squeal. So yeah, it was a lot. And I also felt really, stop biting me, please. I also felt really bad for my neighbors because I'm in an apartment and they're right there. So at least she didn't squeal during the night because she's really good at night times. It's just like constantly throughout the day if I'm not in the same, same room as her. So we've come a long way because at the start of the video, I told you that I couldn't even put her at my feet when I'm making lunch. Whereas now she's all good. She'll just wander around and do her own thing when I'm making dinner and everything like that. But, um, and even when I'm working, she'll just like sleep at my feet. So she's been really good. Um, and even when I go out now, she's so good now that we've ditched the pen. But now I think the main thing that we need to fix is the biting. So I've heard that that can um, persist for even months. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up here. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed meeting Callie. I am absolutely loving having her. I love when we're snuggling together and like um, for a few days this week, I even brought her into bed with me as soon as we woke up and it was just really nice having like a gorgeous puppy on like white linen sheets is just like, I just can't wait until you know, we've passed a little bit of that training because 100% been more work and more physically and emotionally draining than I guess I prepared for or that I expected. So if you're thinking about getting a puppy, just be aware of that. But that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video next week. Yeah.